Hello, my name is Mario. Welcome to another video. In today's episode, I will be sharing with you another tip for building microservices in Go. This is the second part of accessing PostgreSQL databases. The agenda of this video consists of three items. A reintroduction of the project that we built last time, the three different ways that I like to categorize accessing databases, and obviously the second part of the demo of this project. Again, we're building a web service. We're using the IMDB datasets and we're using obviously Postgres. Like I said last time, there are three ways I like to categorize accessing databases. Plain SQL that we covered um, in the last video and the link will be in the description if you haven't seen that video yet. Uh, the ORM or ORM-like packages, which will be covered in this video. Specifically, I will be talking about GORM and SQL Boiler. I'm skipping Buffalo for uh, Buffalo Pop for this time because they're sort of equivalent. Buffalo Pop on GORM, that is. And the third video that will be coming next is SQL statements builders and code, code generators, which is specifically in this case, I will be talking about the Squirrel and SQL C. I want to talk a little bit about GORM before showing you the code. So GORM it uses a, a bunch of the, the um, struct uh, fields for determining how to build the SQL queries. And it has a lot of support for handling relationships, like has many one of uh, belongs to and those kind of relationships that you usually find in any other popular ORM in any other programming language. And it allows you to define uh, different ways to configure those uh, the accessing those tables or building those queries. It doesn't enforce you too many things. I mean, there are a few recommendations that the website uh, gives you in order to build something that they believe will be useful when, when building and implementing all your code. But in the end, it's, it's one of the things that I like about GORM is it doesn't enforce you things. So it doesn't let you, it doesn't tell you, okay, you need to define the IDs in the tables using ID as the table name, as the column name, for example, just to give you an example. So there is flexibility there. However, it's still an ORM and it's still uh, building the SQL statements and behind the scenes and that may be problematic depending with uh, performance or, or maybe uh, how you're building the database. Maybe perhaps you're not familiar or you don't know exactly what is the actual SQL statement that is being built. Maybe you want to know about that. Maybe you don't. So that's something to consider. About a SQL boiler, SQL boiler takes a different route. And I don't like this one because in the end, if you notice the way they describe the project is, is it is a database first ORM as opposed to code first like GORM or GORP. Uh, what it means is that it takes the configuration that you define in a config file for building the relationships that the different tables have. It's more or less much more explicit than the way GORM does it. And it enforces you like the, the like the thing I was saying about Gorm not done and not forcing you to do things the way they wanted to do it. Um, C a SQL Boiler enforces you or uh, suggests a few things before actually building the code that you use for for accessing the database. And it provides similar options like you know the relationships, um, hooks, logs. And those kind of things, transaction, everything that is available in, in GORM, it's also available in SQL Boiler. I wanted to talk a little bit about these packages because those are really different. And in the end, both of them are using reflection for building the queries that, in, that we are using. So everything is behind the scenes compared to uh, what we saw last time, where you were explicitly calling the the statements that you want to run on the database here everything is behind the scenes but you have the flexibility of using uh, helpers for building those queries and if maybe if you're you're not familiar with sql or you're not that familiar with sql or your team is not that familiar with sql they can uh, start really quickly and build something really easily so that's kind of the the, the biggest difference between orms and plain sql everything is handled by the package or the library that you're using and like i said if you have issues with data with 
gener auto generated SQL statements. It's harder depending on the package, harder to debug, and harder to improve. If you're doing the common CRUD operations, then it's not a big deal. But if, you, if you're doing much more complicated things, let's say you're doing upserts, maybe you need to use plain SQL for doing those kind of things. So in the end, you, you need to. We, you need to consider what what's happening when when selecting either the plain SQL or the or ORM ORM like packages. When the time comes, which is in the next video, I will be talking about these two packages, SQL and SQL C, which kind of give you a different take a different approach for building um, the code that is needed for building the SQL statements. But, but we will see about that when when. When the time comes in the next next video now let's jump into the a demo so like i said uh, last time and i'm going to say it again the code of this demo is in github is on, on github and is in the video description as well the link to the video to the code um, and similarly i have uh, all the three implementations that we saw before pgx sql and sqlx and i added gorm and i added and I added boiler, which here is misspelled, but you get the idea. Gorm, uh, again, we are defining in server the through extra endpoints. Here, if you notice, there is part one. If we scroll down, we will see part two that defines the two new endpoints that we're going to be using for this demo. Okay, one for Gorm and one for Oops, uh, what did I do? Okay, let's open it again. One for GORM and one for SQL Boiler. All right, again, the function name, or rather the method name, is called find by end const, which is the ID. And one thing that I had to add this time is something that SQL Boiler enforces, and that is the tables have to have a primary key. So in this case, we didn't have that. In this case, I'm adding end const at the primary key. We didn't have that before, so that's kind of the new change as well. If you go to the implementation of GORM, you will notice that it actually uses these helpers that, depending on the type that you pass in, they will actually build the SQL statement behind the scenes. And that's how it works. And if you notice and recall how SQL X, SQL X works, they are a little bit similar. The biggest difference, obviously, is that everything can be configured and handled through the tags, to these struct tags that GORM implements. So in this case, I'm calling it, this is the primary key, uh, the column name is end const, and the column name is primary name. Otherwise, it will sort of uh, infer the names uh, using the field name. Okay, so that's kind of the biggest difference. Everything is done by by the package instead of you explicitly going and telling okay select i don't know these fields this this column names from this table xyz now if we jump and see sql boiler you will notice that the, the things are a little bit different and one important thing to notice because i was telling you that in this case it's actually building code that happens to be um, used for accessing the database. Now, I'm using this uh, uh, go generate a statement for calling the SQL builder, builder, SQL builder, the SQL boiler command, and I'm passing in, in these two instructions that basically indicate you know re wipe out the a folder or the files in the folder that are in the configuration file, and don't don't add any tests associated, and obviously use P PostgreSQL the dialect for this database. Now. The files that are created, there is a configuration file right here, a TOML file that indicates the database connections and the values that you have to use for connecting to the database. But if you notice right here, I'm actually connecting directly with the previous database URL environment variable that we defined in the readme. So this, this configuration file is only used when generating the actual struct file or the struct types or the models that are basically a representation of the tables that are existing in the database and those exist in the form of literally structs 
that happen to have again a similar instru similar construction uh, if you compare them to what GORM is doing. Again, they are pretty much the same if you look at the GORM source code. The, the difference right here is that it actually you're passing in uh, values that are applicable to specific types so there is no passing around interface empty interfaces for example and uh, compared to GORM and uh, SQL Boiler is explicitly co building you a CRUD well not CRUD but GORM uh, ORM like functions and method methods that apply to the specific models that again are equivalent to the tables that are defined in the database in this case the, the calling the actual model by const is sort of similar to what GORM is doing if you notice if let's compare it if we compare the two the two of them you will notice that they are practically the same except for the fact that we are not defining manually a model struct in the SQL boiler implementation the generator does that for us which is the, the command that I was telling you right here now in practice if we want to see this in action again we go back through the command that we have right here we run it uh, ah, no go files okay let's let's do something let's use the right path let's go here and we're going to be doing is okay it's running in server um, 2020 um, 2020 <laughs> I don't know how to read 8080 so if you do a curl uh, if I recall correctly it will be xget HTTP localhost 8080 and if we go to one of those endpoints that we say I don't know names SQL boiler and the ID which again we can take it from our database we can use f uh, not Fred Astaire let's use James Dean and if we use James Dean and then we do oops obviously 404 if we do uh, get we will see the value right there and again in the end in practice for the users of our API it doesn't matter exactly what is powering the actual SQL statement um, all of them if they are implemented correctly should return the same values so it doesn't really matter okay so should you use SQL boiler or should we use GORM well that's a great question and I don't have an answer for that just yet let's wait until the next video where I will be covering the last two packages that I like using when interacting when accessing databases in Postgres specifically until then keep it up don't give up <laughs>